and the madness in the country right now is at the apex there. Total madness going on in the country. And this madness, we have all witnessed the build up to where we are. And uh, many of us have done quite a lot to ensure that the country gets back on the right course. Unfortunately, we are still entangled in that mess. And what worries me the most, the fact that those who should rise to the occasion are busy eating one another. That's what worries me the most. You go into the social media, you listen to the conversations in the mainstream media, you interact with the people at a personal level, all you hear very frustrating discussions. Who should be the president 2026? Who should lead which political party? Who, is, who should do rise tall above the rest of the, uh, the, 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 the combatants? Who should be at the forefront? Who should do what? And when people just looking for this and that, who should leap frog over who? This is a dangerous debate. It's a dangerous situation for the country. That is the reason at PFT we are duty bound to redirect the conversation, to recast the debate, to have a new chapter in our conversation. And I think that has been the gist of our struggle ever since we launched this platform, the PFT, to say, look here. Ugandans should focus on what matters today. How do we get out of this dire state of affairs? How do we rally all the forces of change towards that particular cause? How do we coalesce behind that particular cause? And what is that cause enemy? Because right now, which is the debate shouldn't be the most powerful individual in the country or in the opposition who is powerful than who, most are rather more powerful than who. Shouldn't be about which party is the strongest. I've seen this debate that which party is stronger than the other, which one is now uh, cheering up to bring a particular candidate for 2026. Because we have really been there before. We have all witnessed what happens in election. And uh, we have said this time and again, we don't need to repeat it. And we thought people would appreciate, would appreciate the crisis we are faced with. That as a people, and this is well captured in our literature here, as a people, we are faced with the failure to derive crisis, and that is the crisis we should all tackle. Unfortunately, the message seems not to be sinking deep within the leadership of various political formations, and that is dangerous. And that is dangerous. So, we should not tire from this effort. We should not give up. We shouldn't waver. We shouldn't relent. We should 
to continue with the fight, with the push, until we get over this situation. What is happening today? The person who has described himself as a warlord, as a Savarwani, as a, a lion, that you will not dare touch that part he mentioned, seem to be running out of fire, out, burning out. And now, they are driving a new agenda. I think that's what the previous speakers were talking about, and the reason we have gathered here, the agenda for succession, or to push the succession agenda. This is now the new phenomena we have, the new dimension, this entrenchment of a personal rule, the new dimension of the entrenchment of the dictatorship in this country. It's like a now a snake shedding off the old skin. We need to pull up our socks. Because right now, you've seen the, the way they organize it, the birthday celebrations. They, they are choreographing everything. And at one time, I think this uh, young man was at one time, I think, after getting the clearance from his father that now you're next in the queue. He got excited. This is my gut feeling. That he got excited and said, ah, I've retired from the army. You remember that tweet he made? Ah, I've retired from the army. All of a sudden. And they think they had to panic and say, yeah, he was scandalized with us. The nation was outraged. There was the, an attempt to have the same statement retracted uh, and so on and so forth. And you remember the events that unfolded later, really showing the country in a very deep crisis. That we went to war as a country in the name of restoring the political sanity, good governance, democratic uh, processes in the country and people died in hundreds. All of a sudden, to get this mockery we are witnessing, this melodrama we are witnessing, we must say no to this. We must say no. So my goal was my duty was to invite the main speaker. My call is, ladies and gentlemen, let's bury our differences, the partisan interests we have. We all belong to different political formations and political parties. It's not time for us now to compete against each other. It's not time to draw daggers against each other. Even if they organize elections, like we have one uh, 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 just around the corner in the Omor, it cannot be a competition between the FDC candidate, the, the, the NUP candidate, the JEMA candidate, the DP candidate. No. That's not going to happen. It's just going to be a battle, a fight against the state machinery unleashed by the state, by the regime, against the people. So it's the people against the state. That is the fight. The state which has been hijacked. 
the state which is in the hands of a cabal, a, a group of individuals. That is it. Now it is that same state machinery they are now putting in the hands of this reckless younger man, General Mohos. Very reckless. I have never seen a very reckless foster general like a one of us. At times you wonder whether he's in full control of his faculties. I'm sorry to mention this. You really wonder. You, you can only compare him to. I failed to, uh, to, to pronounce the name of this North Korean. Kim Jong I can only compare him to that. I'm telling you. And that's where we are headed now. Factually, what, because they are, they, they, what they are driving, that's why it's not also easy for them to, to, to make a breakthrough. Ever since they started that project, it has not taken off. They have pumped a lot of resources in the taxpayers' money. They have used the state machinery to drive it, but it is still on the ground. Why? Because apart from the gun and the birth certificate reading Yoweri Kabuta Museven as the father, what else does he have to show? Nothing. What else? Nothing. Apart from the gun, at least he knows how to pull the trigger. He went to Sandhurst. That one I'm sure he knows. And you, I'm sure he also has a birth certificate reading your Kabuta Museven as the father. Apart from those two, what else does he have to show? That he is one is, is qualified to, to, to be in charge of the state affairs. So we should get prepared for that battle. Not in an election. No. Because one would say, ah, ah let's wait for 2026 and take him head or no. We must deal with the entire infrastructure they have put in place. Dismantle it and get back to the journey we are supposed to take. That is a call we have always made, which is constitutional under Article 3. I get incensed time and again, and I want to repeat it here. I really get incensed and disillusioned when you hear people pushing the blame to those who are taking action. If you are not convinced with the action I'm taking, bring a better one. Because the command is very clear under Article 3 of the Constitution. Where you see this political madness, you have an obligation to take action. It's a constitutional command. And we have time and again said it's better of the people who went to the bush, genuinely, those who went to the bush, genuinely. And it's a betrayal to Ugandans who sacrifice their lives to ensure that there's a new political order where there's political sanity. If you sit with your arms folded, castigate the rest who are fighting when things are taking the wrong direction. So, the conversation we should have, as I conclude, what are those actions we should take under Article 3? Because there is a whole array. By the way, it's uh, not restricted to any particular action you can take. The command is do whatever it takes within your means to ensure that you fight whatever moves those people are taking. That is a, an obligation. So you who is seated there, who is just witnessing
addressing what is happening here at, at Gema. You who is monitoring what we are doing, before you challenge me on the feasibility and sustainability of the actions I have taken, ask yourself what have I done in response to the command under Article 3? Because it's a Canadian call. If all of us rose to the occasion, so we are not assembled here. And you know, our detractors and the naysayers are about to say we have assembled here to lament. No. We are not here to lament. And that is not the reason we have assembled here. We have assembled here to continue on with the conversation on the chapter we opened up. To further that conversation of a transition that what we need to have today is a transition from military rule to a truly democratic dispensation. Where there is freedom of the Where the sovereignty of the people directs the destiny of the country. Where power goes back to the people. That is the conversation. And the regime in power, the cabal we have, is marshalling up all the national resources to suppress that debate. You who is out there attacking us, and you claim to be part of the forces of change, if you castigate us, then you are helping the duty. Count yourself amongst the forces who are in the camp of the Jude. So now the challenge we have, as I conclude, we have a, a force in power that is relentlessly pushing to suppress not only the debate about transition, but the transition itself. And once that happens, two things are likely to happen. Either you have uh, a pseudo change, kind of, and you will a kind of transition, like what happened in Zimbabwe, because Mugabe wanted very much his wife to take over. And what happened? There was a coup. So I want to be surprised one of these days if any of those generals woke up within the, the Museveni yard and announce them. I want to be surprised. And that will not be the transition we want. That will be taking us decades back to where we have come from. Like it's happened, what happened in Zimbabwe? What happened in Mali? What happened in Burkina Faso? What happened in Libya? What has happened even closer home here in, in, South, in Sudan after Bashir and many others? So where there is a suppressed people's transition, what you will witness is a junta taking over from another junta. So there, is, there are warlords within the NRM. Don't think everybody is happy within the NRM circles. No. <coughs> another junta can easily emerge out of the seven regime. And for me, if another junta emerges, like the case was in 1985, taking over from Obote, the Rutra junta, the junta the overthrows another junta. Now this is the Kwagamaya, the, 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 the vicious cycle we are in. We must have a break to that vicious cycle. And say enough is enough to uh, gun rule and go to the people rule. And that is a challenge. Finally, make no mistake, don't deceive yourself, don't delude yourself that any of us single-handedly can, can do this job, can do this work. It's not possible. None of us can single-handedly do it. Not even a single political party where I belong. That if I, I dare say this, I'm on record, I'm deputy president, FBC. FBC alone cannot do it. Alone cannot do it. 
Nuku alone cannot do it. Not even a single person can do it. Not because the junta is very, very strong, but the enormity of the work is beyond our respective capacities as individuals. The Federalism Article 3 commanded all the 48 million Ugandans. Okay, you can leave out those who are below majority age, the minors. All Ugandans of majority age, you are duty bound to take action. And that the action I'm saying is not only one. They are varied actions that you can take. So if you do not join this, please, you can also take another action. But what we to support our government is the Nina PFT. Now we have to talk on at least I for one. Maybe that what you know, Rapola, you know, Rapola. Actually, it would be so good. Or put it out to front and say, Yahoo, when I'm taking action, when I'm taking the action, on I'll be watched. No, we never do, we never do. About our university, but what you call a meeting, but you know what? Banwana. Ah, Naka the whole country is on fire, we're back in there. We're coming in all. Foot bottle on fire. This one on fire. Police, or Kumani, or Kumani. And those little marks, I'll take this opportunity to invite the main presenter, several, the chairperson of PFT, come and deliver.